Hello and welcome to Southern California Water and Power Magazine. I'm your host, Dwight Cromie. According to the Burn Institute Inland Empire, each year several first responders are either injured or burned on the job. Oftentimes a first responder, such as a firefighter or a police officer, arrives at a scene and is unaware of the circumstances and potential hazards. Today, we'll be speaking with representatives from the Inland Empire Labor Management Cooperation Committee who, with the support of Southern California Edison, are sponsoring a series of classes devoted to electrical safety for first responders in emergency situations. My first guest is Bob Frost, the business manager for IBEW Local 440. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Dwight. Can you tell me a little bit more about this electrical safety program that your organization is now supplying first responders or firefighters in the inland Southern California region? Our electrical safety program started off as being a training for the first responders on how to deal with solar panels because of the amount of solar that was going to be going onto rooftops and on buildings and that when they go to break in on a fire um, there were some hazards that they needed to know about. Um, when we started talking to the firefighters about what they needed for training, uh, it went a little bit deeper into the arc flash training and dealing with downed power lines because of the incident that took place a couple of months ago where the family in the backyard passed away um, because they didn't know the hazards of a power line being down. Um, this training has evolved to where now we have one of our quality instructors that is reaching out to all the first responders in the community um, through our organization as an opportunity to give them some safety training to hopefully save some lives. Now, now why did NECA, the IBW, and the LMCC do this program? Who's really benefiting from the program right now? In the long run, the community. Um, more, more so, it would be the first responders. Um, by making them aware of how to deal with down power lines, how to deal with a building where you walk in and somebody turned it into a farm um, by bypassing the meters, there are some hazards that they should know about um, because they can't turn the power off. These people bypass the meter systems. There's no way to turn it off unless they go out and cut the lines from the street. But they don't know that unless somebody tells them about it. Now, what, what would be an instance where a, a first responder, say a fireman, wouldn't be already taught this information from, say, going to a firefighting school? I mean, what is it different? What are you teaching differently? Actually, when they go through the training, they touch on it with a lot of other items. Um, it's not dealt with with a three-hour session. Um, the training that we're doing goes for three hours. It goes in depth into how to deal with power when you come up to it, how many times power comes back on when a line is broken from the power poles. That power doesn't shut off automatically. It comes on several times before it is dead, and there are steps that they have to take to kill that power. This is just to make them fully aware of what they could run into, and if they go to walk into a building and there's a panel sparking and they're dealing with water to put the fire out, there's a huge hazard there for them. So we give them a few recommendations on techniques of how to avoid those hazards. Can you tell me how many fire departments have taken advantage of this program? And, and after watching this program, if a fire chief or a, uh, a fire department would like to take advantage of the courses you're offering, what steps do they need to do to, to, to be able to take advantage of this course? Okay, so far we've done, last count that I'm aware of, is about 22 fire stations. <clears throat> each fire station has three different shifts. So each of those shifts gets a three-hour course, and it varies on when they're available, when the instructor is available. If any of the fire departments would like to have an opportunity to deal um, with this um, training. All they have to do is contact the Inland Empire LMCC, that's the IELMCC.com, and they can go on our website or they can give them a call. Now, I, I know the 
the average training is relatively expensive. Uh, we did a little research, and I think the average fire course was about three or four hundred dollars. How much is it costing these fire departments? I mean, if you're training, say, roughly a hundred firefighters, that's got to be an expensive endeavor for a fire department. Actually, through our industry fund, we're we're associated with the National Electrical Contractors Association and with the IBEW, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, we created a cooperative committee called the Inland Empire Labor Management Cooperation Committee. They are picking up the full cost of this training to the firefighters. It's costing them nothing because we know the economic times. And when it comes to safety, you can't put a value on that. By reaching out to them, we're making them aware that the unions in the area are concerned about our first responders. We care about our community, and we're doing this as an outreach to them. Thank you, Bob. I really appreciate your time, and I, I think what you're doing for the community and for our first responders is, is really important. We'll be back in a moment with C.J. Hamilton, the actual instructor for the course. In July of last year, firefighters from the Upland Fire Department received this invaluable electrical safety training from C.J. Hamilton. According to Battalion Chief Dave Corbin of the Upland Fire Department, hours later his firefighters responded to two completely different electrical emergencies, one involving a small arc flash and the other had to do with electrical overload caused by illegal marijuana operation. In both cases, the firefighters used the information they had learned in these classes hours before to prevent injuries to themselves and others. Chief Corbin went on to say that he believed that this training will be instrumental in saving lives of first responders in the future. I'm here with C.J. Hamilton, the actual instructor for the electrical safety course. Welcome, C.J. Thanks, Mike. Can you tell me, um, tell me a little bit more about the course and what does it entail? Yeah, uh, the main thing that we do is we talk about just three simple things. It's down power lines, arc flash, and arc blast, and that takes up the complete three hours. Well, can you tell me a little bit more, what is arc flash? Uh, I, mean, I don't think many people understand that. And that's the fun part. That's the biggest thing about the firefighters themselves. Uh, when we start the class, I tell them that we're only going to talk about three things, down power lines, arc flash, and arc blast. My very next question to them is, who here in this class has ever heard of arc flash and arc blast? 99% of them have never heard of it. Now, this stuff moves at 186,000 miles per second, the speed of light. It burns three and a half times faster than, the, uh, hotter than the face of the sun, and it uh, has enough power behind it that equals eight sticks of dynamite. So let's do that again. Uh, it moves at the speed of light, uh, it, uh, it burns at 35,000 degrees, and it has enough power behind it that equals eight sticks of dynamite. And 99% of these firefighters have never heard of it. And I tell them that's really uh, a dangerous thing because you're around it all day long. Well, that's kind of scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can, can you tell me, what are some of the common dangers a firefighter runs into like say an auto accident with say a, a, a down power line, what are the dangers they face in a situation like that? Well, one thing we do, and that's part of our course, we, we show people, uh, you know, sitting in cars, how to, how to extract them out of the car. Uh, you know, it's mostly for self uh, rescue. And one thing you gotta remember, this is not a training class, it's an awareness class. We get that right up front, that we're just there to let them know what electricity could do, might do, should do, what it wouldn't do. Because see, electricity works just like fire. It works on conditions, 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 conditions. So when they show up on scene, we'll give them the information they need, but they need to make that decision. And when they show up with, a, with the down power line, a lot of different things come into play. Uh, main thing that we want to do, the number one thing we want them to know is to keep them safe because there's, you know, we, we hit just the tip of the iceberg. We do just all the numbers uh, to keep them away from, you know, keep them safe and keep them away from getting hurt. The one thing that we tell them is the, uh, when a down power line's on a car or wherever it's at, wherever it's touching the ground, we, we uh, make a 30 foot circle. That 30 foot circle, if they stay outside of that, that'll keep them safe. What happens if they walk within that 30-foot circle? Well, it depends because it's all about conditions, conditions. Uh, if they walk in on that circle and they happen to have all the right conditions, there's something called step potential, and they walk right into step potential. Now, step potential is when you take a, a step that's big enough that electricity will actually come up your back leg, go through your chest, and right out your front leg, and it'll, it'll 
take you down right then and there. Now, one thing that we like to teach in this class, and one of the biggest things that we teach in this class, electricity is doing two things. It's always moving, it's always looking for uh, the least path of resistance, and it's always looking for a ground. That's electricity right there. Always looking for the least path of resistance and always looking for a ground. And I always tell these firefighters, when you step inside that circle or anywhere close to it, you could be the least path of resistance or you could be the ground. That's what gets them in trouble. Well, I can see why that would be important to a firefighter. Um, Bob um, earlier alluded to another situation that is common for firefighters is, is, is these new or advanced drug labs yep. where they've actually manipulate or, or change the power system. Can you explain a little bit about that and uh, how that would protect a firefighter? Absolutely. Actually, one of the classes that we did, the Upland Fire Department, uh, we were there on a Friday and Sunday morning they got a call for a house fire. Now, when they get the call, it's just a regular house fire. And uh, so they went and did their regular procedure. They go up, they turn all the power off to the house, they get everything ready, they go in, and they went in and they started uh, to spray the house that was on fire. And one of the firefighters said, hey, he saw a spark and he said, uh, we need to turn the power off. And they, he said, it came back and said, hey, the power is off. And uh, this is why Dave Corman called me. He says, the guy over the radio came, this is exactly what CJ was telling us about. And they backed out and sure enough, when they did, they backed out, they got Edison there to turn off the power. Once they got the power turned off, they went in and fought the fire. And what had happened, they've got the uh, drug guys went in and took the back of the panel out in the living room, because that's the side the panel was on, broke apart the pipe that was there, spread the wires apart, stripped them, lugged their wires on them. Now, when they tie on to Edison, here's where the problem comes. Uh, those things cannot be turned off except at the cutouts at the pole next to the transformer. Wow. So what happens is these firefighters get in there, and if they have just a little pinhole in their boot or anything like that, and they're walking on this on this uh, carpet sweat because they've been spraying it, and then they happen to, now just walking around, it's not going to hurt them, but when they touch, like, say, the handrail going upstairs or something like that to bend over to pick up something, that makes the connection. <laughs> Boom, it's got them. Wow. Well, CJ, thank you for your thank time, you. and I, I, I want to hope that you continue this work, and, 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 I, and I believe you probably will save some lives. The opportunity to learn from NECA IBEW experts in electrical safety is one no fire department can afford to miss, says Redlands Fire Chief Jeff Fraser. David Shankel, Executive Vice President of the National Association of Electrical Contractors, or NECA, stated, eventually, we would like to open this program up to police officers, EMTs, and other first responders throughout the Elan Empire. He went on to say, first responders only get one chance to approach a dangerous situation. Helping educate them will help them make the right choices. To learn more about how you or your agency or fire department can take advantage of this electrical safety course for first responders, please click on the button to the right of my screen. I'm your host, Dwight Cromie, and I want to thank you for watching Southern California Water and Power.